Hey friends, Ash here with GenSense and I'm back with another first impression slash haul video slash unboxing video, whatever you wanna call it. I've been trying to do these when I get new fragrances in instead of just doing a big haul video because these have a little more information in them. They're a little more useful. We've got five fragrances to go over today and one of these you can pick up as of this video for an awesome, awesome price. So if it's a fragrance you've been looking for or a fragrance that you've been trying to pick up on a good deal, this is probably about as good as it's gonna get. I've got fragrances here from Isi Miyake, two to be exact, one from Cremo, one from Armoff, and one from Guerlain. So let's jump into this. First off, let's go over the fragrances that we're gonna be taking a look at today. First, the Cremo. This one is Silver Water and Birch. I'm gonna talk more about this in just one second. I've got two from Isi Miyake, and for some reason, every time I hold these bottles up, it makes my face go darker. So maybe I shouldn't have the camera on auto, but check this out. What? It is instantaneous. So we have Nuit DC, Noir Argent, uh, excuse me if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. I said in my last review of Pulse of the Night, my last Isi Miyake review, that I purchased two more Isi Miyake fragrances because of how impressed I was with that release. So this is one of them. The other Isi Miyake I purchased is this one, Shade of Lagoon. The Armoff is Legacy. I'm assuming that's how you're supposed to say this. It's spelled kind of stupidly, if I'm being honest. I just threw this into my cart when I was making a purchase. I was trying to check out some Armoff fragrances that I didn't know anything about. And lastly, this one, Guerlain Louis, which is actually a fragrance that I've wanted for a long time. First off, let's crack into this Cremo, and I need to let you guys know that Cremo is actually going to be doing a sponsored video on my channel not very long from now, or I should say a sponsored giveaway. Some of you that have been around on this channel for a long time are gonna remember that I reviewed Cremo back last year when I got around actually around this time last year. They start having gift sets pop up at stores like Walmart and Target all across America where they'll bundle up a fragrance with a body wash, stuff like that. And I reviewed one of those. So Cremo reached out to me this year and said that they would sponsor a giveaway, which is awesome. And they sent me body wash and shampoo and fragrances and all kinds of stuff, which was really unexpected. So I'm gonna open up one of those right here. This one is called Silver Water and Birch. Cremo was actually a brand that I had heard about for a long time before I purchased one myself. People have been posting them on Facebook groups and stuff like that, saying that they were really high quality for a good price. So we got this opened up and here we go. I'll give you a quick look at the bottle and the box like always with these. Here we go, Cremo Silver Water and Birch. We've got the notes on the side there and a little information on the back. Here is your bottle. All of the fragrances from this company come in the same bottle, just with a different sticker. Then you can see on the side there, Grimo. I actually have a body wash of this fragrance as well. I already know what this smells like. You can tell by the body wash. You can probably tell by the name. But let's give this one a spray and see what kind of quality we're dealing with here. Handy dandy tester strip. Immediate, immediate, yeah, Silver Mountain Water. It has officially a top of iced spring water accord, mid of oak moss, base of sun washed woods. That is nice. It is very similar. It has that fresh, brisk opening that you come to expect from Silver Mountain Water. Not too much of that inky vibe. This goes more the metallic side of things. Just a slight tinge of some greenery in there, but this is nice, especially for the price of these, which is what I said last year in the video that I did when I uh, picked up one of the sample sets from Target. So let's hop from that one to the Guerlain. So this is Guerlain Louis. Right now, as of this video, if you're watching this in the future, it's probably changed. As of this video, this is available on FragranceNet for about 50 bucks. Now it is a tester, so it's gonna come in a box like this that you're really not gonna care about. But it does come with the cap, so that's a positive. If you don't mind about the full presentation, this is, in my opinion, going to be the best you're ever gonna find this fragrance. It retails for $185 for this size. 50 mils. I have wanted to smell this since it came out, but I was waiting for a good deal, like a cheapskate, I guess. And now one has finally presented itself and I've got it. So here we go, first impressions. I don't know why I do this in every single video, but whatever, I'm just gonna spray this one on skin. It's like you get these really good ones and then you spray it on a tester strip and then wonder why you even did that. You should just go ahead and wear it. That smells really good but it's not gonna be for everybody, and I can tell that right away. There is a good amount of clove right off the top. Pick up a little bit of smokiness as well, uh, pretty much immediately. It is a bit resinous, but not overwhelmingly so. The quality here is apparent 
right away. It's coming across obviously like a cold weather fragrance. This is something fall, winter. I would say that right now, it's still a little too warm for it probably, or at least where I live. It's not coming across overwhelming. It's not coming across all that strong, which is interesting because the notes here are really dense, rich. Like I said, there's a little bit of smokiness. There's some clove, there's some resin, smells like vanilla in here. All right, let's crack into this Armoff. I guess before I do that, I should show you this bottle up close. It only comes in this size, 50 mils. There is the bottom with your batch code. It has a little wooden cap that slides snugly into place and the atomizer is fine on that as well. Okay, back to the Armand. Oh, okay, that's strange. <laughs> kind of wasn't expecting that. Uh, the box opens like a Zippo, it's a Zippo box. It's a Zippo bottle and a Zippo box, how cool. I'll show you the box here really quickly. There you can see it, Armoff Legacy, spelled L3G-E-S-I. There is the back of the box, and here's the bottom with your batch info. So this bottle is from April 2018. Like I showed you, the box opens like that, has a little tab, which you pull, and then I guess that lifts the, uh, the bottle out, and then you can see Dang it. Then you can sit it down inside. So, wow. Armoff's ingenuity knows no bounds. Armoff has some really ugly bottles. I don't think this one is gonna be in their top 10 ugliest bottles, but it is interesting. There it is, Armoff Legacy. Kind of looks like a suitcase. There's the back, which is coming across very dark. Has these little ribs on the side. And there's your sticker. Like I showed you, it's got this kind of Zippo thing going on. So let's give this one a spray and see how this smells. Eh, eh. Off a tester strip, a little bit sharp in the opening. Gentlemanly, kind of old school fragrance. It's a little bit green, a little bit herbal. Uh, it's definitely got lavender and that's super obvious. Lavender done in like I said, kind of a more classical style. Yeah, yeah, so this is gonna be Chanel Platinum Ego East, which I own two bottles of. You know, it smells a lot better than the last couple that I've done reviews on, which were Craze Fresh, Craze Blue, those in the Arm Off Craze line. Those are pretty terrible, those are horrible. Off a of tester strip, this doesn't smell horrible. Uh, it, smells, it smells close enough to Platinum Ego East that you could probably spray this on and people would think that you're wearing the Chanel. I'm not sure how this one is gonna dry down, so I don't know if in the dry down it goes a different direction or you know switches things up, but in the opening it's pretty obvious what this is trying to be. Oh, oh, I just knocked the box off the table. I may do a review on that one, I'm not sure. I'd have to give it more wear and compare it directly to the Chanel to make sure that I'm getting that correct. Uh, and to see if it goes a different direction in the dry down. Up next, let's do Shade of Lagoon, shall we? Isi Miyake. Oh, come on now. Now let's see if it turns my face dark once again. Okay, Shade of Lagoon, day two, 1028 AM, is what it says on the front. On the back, I have never experienced such an incandescent shade of blue. My heart is overwhelmed and my spirit is already floating. Isi Miyake is really well known for doing their low DC summer flankers every single year. A lot of people collect those and then just as many people hate on them and say that they're redundant. Let's take a look at the bottle and the box really quickly. Box first. Low DC Porom, Shade of Lagoon. The pattern wraps around to the side. Little info on the bottom there. There is your back of the box. And there's your bottom. Here's your bottle. Definitely a summer looking bottle if I've ever seen one. Or a summertime fragrance bottle, I should say. Yeah, finally. It was on there. I remember covering this back on This Week in Fragrance uh, many months ago. So I've known about this for quite a while. Let's give it a spray. Okay, so it's got a pleasant citrus right off the top, kind of an aquatic feeling as well. And off the tester strip, it smells like Ambroxan all up in here. Citrus does not come across like yuzu. Comes off like a, a citrus blend with uh, grapefruit and something else. Yeah, I mean, off the tester strip, it's really clean, fresh, sweet. Again, based off citrus, aquatics, and ambroxan in the opening, those are all really, 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 really apparent. Easy to pick up. Just in the opening, it smells really nice. I mean, it's not anything that's crazy unique. That's definitely true. 
but for a good price, that would be an easy, easy, easy summer wear, especially daytime, warm weather, uh, spring or summer. Not something I'd wanna wear in fall. Not something I'd really wanna wear in winter, unless it's one of those cold days and you wanna spray on something fresh to remind you of when it was warm outside, something like that. I don't know, it smells fine. At least first impression. Final box, new EDC, Noir Argent. There we go, final one. Let's get this open. Alrighty, box incoming. Here we've got the front of the box. Pattern wraps around the side. Here's your back of the box and the bottom. This box has seen better days. It got knocked around a little bit in transit. Here we have the bottle, pretty slick looking. I like that black look. And there is the bottom. So I should let you guys know, I bought all these fragrances from FragranceNet, except for the Cremo. Uh, that one obviously was sent to me. These are all still available on FragranceNet, except this one, as of this video, is sold out. The others are still available. They'll probably get this one back at FragranceNet before long. It's just as of right now, it's showing sold out. All right, let's give it a spray. So that is interesting. That's, that's very different from Pulse of the Night off the top, which is the last one that I reviewed. Off a tester strip, when you first spray this on, it has like a like a zingy kind of pepperiness to it. Really zingy, it just pops off there. I'm not sure how to describe that better here initially. There's some citrus too. It smells like there's some, there's some spice in here, but I'm not sure what it is. So interesting. It's coming across, and this is gonna sound weird, Maybe it's just because it's the tester strip here. Like some sort of carbonated soda or something. It escapes me. Just some sort of like carbonated spicy beverage. <laughs> it's just where it has that, that zing where it's just leaping off here. I guess I'm gonna have to just spray it on my, on my skin and see if it does the same thing off of my skin as it is here. Like I've talked about in the past with some fragrances sometimes, tester strips will fool you into thinking one thing and then you spray it on your skin and it's completely different. Let's let that dry for just a second. It is not, 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 not a singing off skin. No, it is much fresher off a tester strip. I've been fooled again. There is not as much pepper off skin at all. This is dark. This is a dark fragrance. I think personally, this one is going to be less enjoyable on the whole than Pulse of the Night is. There's like a dark, dusty resin here. Um, so it's gonna have a little bit more of a some people will call it like a powder. It comes across more like that than Pulse of the Night did. That spice in the opening uh, is going to be nutmeg, but it comes across way, way stronger off skin than it does a tester strip. Tester strip, uh, you get the pepper and it just pops off. It's very bright initially, which is kind of strange, a little bit zingy. Off skin, there's almost no zinginess at all. It really doesn't jump off your skin. It, it's more like a dense cloud that kind of wafts off your skin. So instead of getting this like sparkle that some fragrances will give you where it hits your nose and you're just like, wow, that's, that's really intriguing. Instead of that, it's like this thick, meandering cloud of like dusty resins and deep spices. Now there's a little bit of smokiness kind of creeping in. It's got like a leather note that's coming out, becoming more prominent. A lot of nuances start to come out about five minutes in. I'm gonna have to give this one more wear and it is something I'm going to give more wear. It comes across, just first impressions, very high quality, which I'm coming to expect from Isi Miyake. Very dark, to me even darker than Pulse of the Night. Not as immediately appealing as Pulse of the Night. Uh, it smells like it's something that's gonna have to grow on me a little bit more. So that one and Louis are probably the two that I'm looking forward to smelling the most. I wanna see where those go. Shade of Lagoon smells good. It's just, I kind of know what to expect with that one. The Cremo smells like Silver Mountain Water. It smells like the opening of Silver Mountain Water. It's almost like you take that opening and stretch it out a bit. And I can tell you the body wash for uh, that fragrance, Silver Water and Birch by Cremo, that body wash smells basically like the opening of Silver Mountain Water. So if you like that, um, even if you're not wanting to get the fragrance clone wise, check out the body wash if you like Silver Mountain Water. And Louis just smells like a million bucks. All right guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow with another fragrance related video. I hope you guys have an awesome day. Keep smelling good. See you guys next time.